We have a pink on red, on pink, on a bunch of pink moment. I have my smoothie, got my books, got my phone. We're ready to roll. Hello, sunshines, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, hi, my name is Natalie, and welcome back to Batari Vlogs. Today, if you can't tell by the title, we're doing a huge book haul. I have been on the kick for wanting more romance books. I have a lot of books on my shelf, and I'm actually filming two videos today, series I want to finish, and my book haul. But first, we're doing my book haul. I went on Amazon and ordered eight books, went to Target and bought two books because I have so many books on my TBR that I want to read and so many books that I want to buy. But we're just going to go ahead and get on to this because we have 10 books today that we need to get through and I want y'all to be able to enjoy this video today. We've got a big stack of books and I'm ready to get into it. The first book I have is The Summer of Broken Rules by K.L. Walther. I heard about this and I heard many people say this is giving very Taylor Swift-esque vibes, which I love me some Swifty. The top says, it's all fun and games until someone loses their heart. When Meredith Fox lost her sister, Claire, 18 months ago, she shut everyone out. But this summer, she's determined to join the world again. The annual family vacation to Martha's Vineyard seems like the perfect place to reconnect. Her entire extended family is gathering for a big summer wedding, and although Meredith is dateless after an unexpectedly dumped, <clears throat> after being unexpectedly dumped, she's excited to participate in the in the traditional Fox family of assassin that will take place during the week of wedding festivities. Claire always loved the game, and Meredith is determined to honor her legacy. But when Meredith forms an alliance with the cute groomsmen, she finds herself getting distracted. Meredith tries to focus on the game and win it for her sister, but can't help falling for him. And as the week progresses, she, realize, she realizes she's not only at risk of losing the game, but also her heart. Going through someone, her name is Meredith, she lost her sister Claire uh, for how long ago, and she's going through heartbreak is hoping she can find distraction and make amends and maybe kind of live to be like Claire or find ways to remember Claire, but is also realizing she's following someone. So while she has a broken heart already from her sister passing away, she also doesn't want another broken heart for falling for someone. I think this is going to be really, 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 really good, and I'm super excited to read this. I don't know if I want to save this for the summer or just hit it around Valentine's Day. I have heard about this book everywhere. Like, everyone and their mother has read this book. It is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. It's a New York Times bestseller, and I was like, you know what, I need to go ahead and jump on this. I think I was in between the love hypothesis and love on the brain, but I chose the love hypothesis. When a fake relationship between scientists meets the irresistible force of attraction, it throws one woman's carefully calculated theories on love into chaos. So we have a PhD candidate, Olive Smith, who doesn't believe in everlasting relationships, but her best friends do. And they're trying to convince her that there's a way to happily ever after, but she doesn't believe it. And she is just all about science. She kisses the first man she sees, and that is her professor, Adam Carlson. And, you know, I think they have this fake dating trope. It's grumpy meet sunshine, and I'm super excited. I know Lexa Ray talked about each chapter begins with a hypothesis, if I could find it. It starts with a hypothesis. I wonder if they have a conclusion at the end of the chapters because most of the time you have a hypothesis and a conclusion. I'm super excited to read this and I just thank you Target for actually having this. The rest of these books are from Amazon. I bought quite a few because I always have a pretty good deal on Amazon. The first book I have is Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. First of all, can we talk about this cover? It says, can true love survive her true crime obsession? Me love true crime and it also matches my shirt do y'all notice that it says one woman is going to have to learn how to give love a chance when she's used to suspecting the worst in this fresh romantic comedy i'm letting y'all know before i ever talk anymore about this book a lot of these books i was just like someone says they're good let's pick them up so i'm going into these kind of blind phd candidate phoebe walsh has always been obsessed with true crime she's even analyzing the genre in her dissertation if she can manage to finish writing it it's hard to find the time when she spends the summer in Florida cleaning out her childhood home, dealing with her obnoxiously good-natured younger brother, and grappling with the complicated feelings of mourning of a father she didn't have a relationship with for years. It doesn't help that she's low-key convinced that her new neighbor, Sam Standing, is a serial killer. 
He may dress in business casual by day, but by night, he's clearly up to something. Long before Phoebe realizes that Sam might be something much scarier, a genuinely nice guy who can pierce her armor to reach her vulnerable heart. Super excited to read this. I'm a true crime junkie, but I'm also a romance junkie, so I think this is just going to be perfect, and I love that it matches it, so I think it's meant to be for this on my February TBR. The next book I have is In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. This is one of my smallest books that I think I have bought. I think all of them are normally 400 pages. This one is a whopping 275 pages, which is very rare for my books to be this small. Annie Cohen lives her life by the numbers. She's nothing like her lifelong best friend. The wild, whimsical, believes in fate Bella. Danny's meticulous planning seems to have paid off after she nails the most important job interview of her career, accepts her boyfriend's marriage proposal in one fell swoop, falling asleep completely content. But when she awakens, she's suddenly in a different apartment with a different ring on her finger beside a very different man. Danny spends exactly one hour, five years in the future before she wakes up again in her home on the brink of midnight, and it is one hour she cannot shake. In five years is an unforgettable love story, but it is not one you're expecting. I have heard things about this where people are saying it has made them happy, it has made them upset, it has made them mad. I think it's going to get very Groundhog's Day where they're reliving the day over and over again, except she's getting a glimpse in her future while being in the present, which I think is just going to blow my mind. I love the cover on this. I love the, the summary to it, and I'm super excited to read this. The next book I have. I had to just do a dramatic entrance. It's Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Yo, look at this cover. It is so cute. It's a little rain boots and dress boots. A TV meteorologist and a sports reporter scheme to reunite their divorce bosses with unforecasted results in this electrifying romance. So we have a Weather Girl and a sports media man. Ari Abrams has been fascinated by weather. She loves almost everything about her job as a TV meteorologist. Her boss, legendary Seattle weather woman Torrance Hale, is too distracted by her tempestuous relationship with her ex-husband, the station's news director, to give Ari the mentorship she wants. Ari, who runs on sunshine and optimism, is at her wit's end. The only person who seems to understand how she feels is sweet but reserved sports reporter Russell Berenger. The aftermath of a disastrous holiday party, Ari and Russell decide to team up to solve their boss's relationship issues between secret gifts Double dates, they started nudging their bosses back together. But their well-meaning meddling backfires and the real chemistry builds between Ari and Russell. Working closely with Russell means allowing him to get to know parts of herself that Ari keeps hidden from everyone. Will he be able to embrace her dark clouds as well or her clear skies? I think this is going to be such a good spring read. I love, love, love anything that's like two people that are like co-workers to lovers, friends to lovers, anything like that. The next book I have... And I'm telling you, I love this author, is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I got this from Target, and it's one of the new ones. I remember seeing it, and I'm like, maybe it's like camping, something of the sort. But it's about Macy Sorensen. She's settling into an ambitious and emotionally tepid routine, work hard as a new pediatrics resident, plan her wedding to an older, financially secure man, keep her head down, and heart talk away. But when she runs into Elliot, the first and only love of her life, the careful bubble she constructed begins to dissolve. Once upon a time, Elliot was Macy's entire world, growing up from her gangly, bookish friend into the man who coaxed her heart open again, only to break it on the very night he declared his love for her. What an alternating line, timelines between then and now, teenage Elliot and Macy grow from friends to much more spending weekends and lazy summers together in a house outside of San Francisco, devouring books, sharing favorite words, talking through their growing pain and triumphs as adults that have become strangers to one another until their chance for union. Although their memories are obscured by the agony of what happened that night so many years ago, Elliot will come to understand the truth behind Macy's decade-long silence and will have to overcome the past and himself to revive her faith in the possibility of an unconsuming love. So these are two people that loved each other, fell apart and are trying to reunite back together. I do love, I love any romance book. I especially love books like this. I think the last book I read that's like this is The Best of Me by Nicholas Sparks. But I love Christina Henry, her writing style. And I like that it's going to be from dual timeline. So you kind of get the connection in the middle. I have four more books. The next book I have is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. The back says, sometimes the one who loves you is the one who hurts you the most. Which is true because you make yourself vulnerable to other people. This is one of two books she has written that are in this kind of like sequel, prequel. I have two other books here that she's written that I love. She has It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us. Lily hasn't always had it easy, but that's never stopped her from working hard for the life she wants. 
She's come a long way from the small town in Maine where she grew up. She graduated from college, moved to Boston, and started her own business. So when she fills a spark with a gorgeous neurosurgeon named Ryle Kincaid, everything in Lily's life suddenly seems almost too good to be true. Ryle is assertive, stubborn, maybe even a little arrogant. He's also sensitive, brilliant, and a total soft spot for Lily. But Ryle's complete aversion to relationships is disturbing. As questions about her new relationship overwhelm her, so do thoughts of Atlas Corrigan, her first love and link to the past where she left behind. He was her kindred spirit, her protector. When Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily has built with Ryle is threatened. In this bold and deeply personal novel, Colleen Hoover delivers a heart-wrenching story that breaks exciting new ground for her as a writer. It ends with us as an unforgettable tale of love that comes with the ultimate price. It does have trigger warnings from people about domestic violence, domestic abuse, but I am excited to read this. I think it's something that is good to come to light because a lot of times this stuff happens and people just push it under the rug. And I'm super excited to read this book and I'm hoping if I really like this, I'll read It Starts With Us. This next book, y'all, I don't know what took me so long to get it, but when I went to go buy it in December for my book club I was in, they were sold out, sold out of this book. So this is Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. This is another Grumpy Meat Sunshine book for first. So he's the one thing she couldn't plan for. Anastasia Allen has worked her entire life for a shot at Team USA. It looks like everything is going according to plan when she gets a full scholarship to the University of California, Maple Hills, and lands a place on their competitive figure skating team. Nothing will stand in her way, not even the captain of the hockey team, Nate Hawkins. Nate's focus as a team captain is on keeping his team on the ice, which is tricky when a facility's mishap means they are forced to share a rink with a figure skating team, including Anastasia, who clearly can't stand him. But when Anastasia's skating partner faces an uncertain future, she may have to look to Nate to take her shot. Sparks fly, but Anastasia isn't worried, because she could never like a hockey player, right? I think this is going to be such a good book. I've never read like a hockey romance type of thing. This also does have dual point of views. I love dual point of views. I'm actually reading a book right now that has dual point of views. And also I love the cover. I love the feel of it. It's just, it's very artsy. It's giving like it was sketched out and super pretty. We are finally down to two books. Next book is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. I've heard so many things about Archer's Voice. And I finally jumped on the bandwagon and got it. And... This is one of Alexa Ray's five star reads. It's apparently a top 100 romance novel. I wanted to lose myself in the small town of Pelion, Maine, to forget everything I had left behind the sound of rain, the blood, the calmness of a gun against my skin. For six months, each breath has been a reminder that I survived, and my dad didn't. I'm almost safe again, but the moment I meet Archer Hale, my entire world tilts on the axis, and it's never right, it never writes itself again. Until I trespass into a strange, silent, and isolated world, Archer communicates with no one. Yet in his whiskey-colored eyes, something intangible happens between us. There's something much more to him than his beauty, his presence, or his ways of hand communication to me. On me. But this, war this town is mired with secrets, betrayals, and Archer is the explosive center of all of it. So much passion and so much hurt, but it's in Archer's silence that we might just find what we need to heal and to live. I've heard so many people say this made them cry, and I need a good book to cry. The very last book I have is X's and O's by Amy Lee. Valentine's Day mood, if you can't tell. This is about a girl who is all about social media, and to find love reconnects with her exes to see if she can get a second chance of romance. Little does she know she will connect with a fireman who, in her eyes, she doesn't think would be the love of her life, but little does she know he probably is. That is all for my book haul. It is a lot of books. Between that and reading on my Kindle, I have a lot of books I need to read on my shelf, but I love adding more to my shelf. I hope you guys enjoy my book videos, and I also try to post on TikTok and on my bookstagram. If you'd like to follow those, my bookstagram is underscore novels by Nat underscore you can follow my TikTok at Nat Batari or even my main Instagram page to get updates on what I'm reading, what I'm doing, and all things throughout life. But thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye, guys. Bye.